Hey guys, we're going to start now. First up, we've got uh, Tammy Buto. Hi everyone. Uh, my name's Tammy Buto, and I'm the Site Reliability Engineering Manager at Dropbox. I manage the databases team in San Francisco, and from my accent, you can hear that I'm Australian. I moved over to America a year and a half ago, um, first to work at DigitalOcean on cloud infrastructure, and prior to that, I worked at the National Australia Bank for almost six years, and I studied computer science at university. Um, I've been working with Linux and MySQL for over 10 years, which isn't that long, like in the industry, um, but I've just loved it so much over those 10 years. And I started programming 20 years ago. Uh, first I made little scripts, then web apps. I also worked in security in the National Australia Bank cybercrime, cybercrime team. I also built desktop software and mobile applications. But over the last three years, I've just absolutely loved working on cloud infrastructure, and I love working with large-scale systems. When I was at DigitalOcean, it really got me to love Linux so much because we had to support eight different distros, and I led a team of 30 system administrators, and it was an awesome learning experience. Endless postmortems are also great, and especially if you actually do a postmortem for every single page, I found that it can really help you reduce pages, even when you have millions of customers. And the last one is coding, always be coding. So like I said before, we have a lot of customers that we look after, and we have over a billion files that get saved every day with Dropbox. So Dropbox lets you get to your files anywhere on any device, and you can share them with anyone. I have so many favorite customers that use Dropbox. Uh, I think one of the coolest things is there are so many artists that use Dropbox, and I really love music and film. And recently, Tool talked about how they created their album using Dropbox because, like, they share music and um, the lyrics and like what they're going to write. And I think that's awesome because I love metal so much. And I was like, wow, that's cool. So it makes you feel good when you're like building systems and looking after systems that people are creating really amazing things with. So, like I said before, 400 million customers which, coming from Australia, where we have a population of 24 million, when I went to America, I was like, wow, like, this is cool. I get to work somewhere where we support 400 million customers. And it's exciting to be able to build something that so many people are using all over the world. So being a site reliability engineer to me, I've always loved programming. Like, since I was 12 years old, I've always loved to code. And I love so much that when we're doing ops work and we're looking after large-scale systems, we're also building our own tools. And I think that's really cool because no matter where you are, there are tools that you can build. And I think it's really important to build them for your company and for what you're working on and your infrastructure. And I also think it's really cool to share so that we can all learn from each other. So today I'm going to talk about the tools and systems that we've built, and I'll also share what we've open sourced that everyone can use as well. One of our values at Dropbox is to sweat the details. And this is something that I've really loved since I joined, because I know we all get so busy. There's so many things that you need to do every day. There's always new things happening. But if you really think, OK, I'm going to sweat the details. I'm really going to di deep dive into this problem. I'm going to try and identify the root cause and figure out what actually went wrong. Then you can stop that from happening again. And over the last few months at Dropbox, it's really taught me if something happens once and then it happens again, we'll deep dive into it. We even deep dive into it on the first time it happens and stop it from happening a second time, which I love that mentality. And every time we think, can we automate this? Like, do we really have to do this? Um, should it be us doing this? Or can we write a script that does it for us? And I think like, just asking yourself that question all the time, like, what is the root cause? Can I actually fix this? Do I need to do this again? Um, that will save you so much time and make everyone on your team happier. And I think with Dropbox going from 200 million customers only three years ago to now 400 million customers, that's been one of the most important things. In 2012, on my team, the databases team, we only had one databases engineer for 200 million customers. And that's thousands of database servers. So I think that's pretty amazing. Right now, we have nine people on our team for 400 million customers. But definitely, sweating the details has helped us scale so fast. 
with all that growth. So when you have large numbers of machines, like thousands of machines per person, you can either choose, choose to build tools or you can hire lots and lots of people, but it's really hard to find those people. Um, and as a hiring manager over the last few years, I've found it quite hard to find people, even if you look all over the world. My team are in Dublin, Malta, Vegas, San Francisco. We're a distributed team, but it's still tough to find people. So often that makes us think, maybe we can build tools, and this can help us scale really fast. And we still do have hundreds of machines per SRE on our team that we look after. My team alone, just the databases team, has 6,000 machines to manage. And we don't just look after the databases, we actually allocated those machines, the Linux boxes, and we have to do everything, kernel upgrades, MySQL upgrades, security patches. We're involved in everything to look after those machines. And I love that, that's really cool for us because we look after the whole stack. And I love it that we get to go really deep and to think about performance, how does the kernel impact MySQL, um, what can we do to make it even better. We think about things like backups and compression. And we build a lot of our tools in Python and Go. And I'll share a few of them now. So one of the big things is I love like using PagerDuty. I think it's really handy. The PagerDuty team are right near us. And I often go up to visit them to talk about how we can improve um, PagerDuty and what it provides. And we've created this PagerDuty library which is written in Python, and it's available on GitHub. So everybody can go and check that out and use that. And I found that just using this library, plus also the built-in analytics, with, which are available in PagerDuty, has helped us get a reduction of 10x in pages, which is huge. Like, originally, we aimed to have, oh, like, let's um, reduce pages by 10%. But it just kept going down every week because every week we got together and we had a meeting and we said, look, let's look at our pages. We'll look at all of them that happened across the whole week. We just look at this screen and we say, what are the pages that keep happening over and over again? Which are the top ones that we need to fix? And then we identify what tools can we build, what scripts can we write that will help us knock out those top three pages that keep happening. And that's been amazing. So in the last two months, to get a 10x reduction. It's been pretty cool. And these tools are totally available for you on GitHub, on the Dropbox account, and then also within PagerDuty. And I think uh, this has really taught me over the last two months that, that idea of sweating the details, always thinking about what you can build yourself, uh, what script you can write, what you can automate, how you can make life better for not just yourself, but everyone in the entire team. Like, it's so exciting to come into that meeting. We have it every Wednesday morning with everyone across the world. And we just, like, love to look through the detail and think, like, how can we make this better? And when you get to go back the next week and celebrate, we're so happy. We're like, wow, like, we just keep making this better every single week. Through doing that process of meeting every single week and trying to think, how do we make it better? We also started to think differently about how we manage pages and alerts. One of the biggest things that we realized was it's OK to snooze. Like, we don't need to page for everything if it's not necessary. So for example, when we do database promotions, I think pages will go off, but we don't actually need those pages because we're breaking things on purpose because we're doing a promotion. So we don't want those pages to come because they're distracting, and we have to either snooze them manually in advance or snooze them as they come up. And whoever's managing that promotion will take on call for that period of time. But what we realized was within our promotion script that we run, we could automatically snooze specific alerts for specific machines which we were promoting. And this has meant that we can reduce several more pages every single time that we do a promotion. And I think just that mentality of thinking like, wow, this is a problem that we have right now, but how can we automate it? Do we need it to be a problem for the next few years? This is something that will just continue to be a problem if we don't fix it. Let's try and actually fix the root cause. And just being in this mentality and always thinking, how can we make things better, has been so fun for our team, and we get to be very creative. And it also means we do get to have much more sleep I know my team's been so happy. Um, one of the guys on my team, he recently had a little baby, and he's our tech lead, so he knows everything. But he didn't get paged once while he was on, mat on paternity leave. Uh, so that was really awesome. 
And it's the same thing for when we had the Christmas holiday and New Year's. We didn't have any pages. And that's awesome because we've been trying to get to that point. Something else that we really focus on as well is having self-healing systems and auto-remediation through writing scripts. And this is a big thing that we've constantly been focusing on. Originally, we started to write small scripts to do certain things, like replace systems that were broken. We'd take it out of rotation and put a new system in, and it would all be automated. And if it failed, then we might get a page. But I'll actually explain now the different tools that we built to then build that out and make it even better. I think overall, just thinking about what tools can you build internally for your system is really cool. And we have actually shared some of them as well. The first one is one that every team across infrastructure at Dropbox uses, which is called Hermes. And this is also available on GitHub. So Hermes is really good for us. In the databases team, our one of our infrastructure teams will say, hey, we have a quest open for you. And it's pretty fun, because you're like, ooh, what's our quest? OK. So we like open it up and look at it, and it will tell us what we need to do. So maybe there could be a few hundred machines that we need to do an action on. Um, it could be a rack switch upgrade or a security update. But it's really cool, Hermes, because it's actually a, uh, it has a UI, and it's an interface. And everyone in our team can see the status of those different machines and where they're at. Um, and it's really nice. Like, and this is something that everybody here can use. And I know that I've come from places before where we didn't have anything like this. So seeing this and seeing that our team built this because they just thought it would be better is really cool. I've worked places where we had spreadsheets, where we had, hey, we need to upgrade these machines. They're on an old kernel. Um, but now just being able to have Hermes and easily see which teams need to work on which things and having it so nicely organized, it really helps. And it's definitely part of that sweating the details. A tool that I really love, which saves us lots of time, especially on my team, is called DB Manager. We haven't yet uh, shared the code for this, but this is something that we're working on sharing soon. And it automates database operations. So we can do a lot of really cool stuff here. The reason that we created DB Manager was because there were certain reoccurring tasks that as we scaled, they just took too much time. So then we decided to create this tool. And it helps us with so many different things kernel upgrades, MySQL upgrades, schema changes, database cloning, database promotions, backups. It's really good for our team because there is this UI that you can actually see, oh, like my team member just did a promotion for this database, or someone just did a schema change there. And it means that you don't have two people doing the same thing at once by accident. That just doesn't happen because you can actually easily see it there in the screen on the UI. And that's good for us, especially since we have a distributed team and we're not all in the same office. We're all over the world. And we use certain tools to help us communicate, um, which I'll also talk about. But I definitely think this idea of having tools with a UI and building web apps for infrastructure is really cool. Because in the past, I'd mainly seen, mainly seen command line tools or um, people using a lot of spreadsheets. But I love the idea of building web apps. So like I said before, because we have a distributed team, we use Slack a lot, which I really love. And I've been using that for the last one and a half years. And it's been really awesome. At DigitalOcean, I managed 30 Linux system administrators. And they were based remotely across the US. Now my team is based globally across the world. And we, work, we always work a 24-7 um, time frame. So we're always on. There's always someone working. And it's nice to be able to just automatically get our PagerDuty alerts in Slack, because we have a bot that does that. We then will respond and explain what actions we took within Slack, so everybody can log on and see the past history of the last 24 hours at any time, or even longer. You can scroll all the way through, and you can search. One of the bots that we created for fun is called GrumpyBot, and that's also available on GitHub. And one of my team members, Slava, he created this bot. And really, it's just like an example of something fun, because we're always being creative and trying to think of things that we can do together to just push ourselves to aim higher and make things that are cool. And this one, if you paste a link to um, the Golang Playground, then it'll post back the code, and then it will also show the result, and it posts it in Slack. But it's a really nice little bot. 
uh, that shows you how to write a bot in Go for Slack. And it's really simple. So I definitely recommend taking a look at that. And I'll share my slides and these links after. And for me, this really um, shows our value at Dropbox, which is actually just this picture. I love that Dropbox, like one of the values is a picture of a cupcake. <laughs> And when I started, I was like, wow, that's awesome. I used to work at the National Australia Bank. You wouldn't see that. Um, but the idea behind the cupcake is that it's about delight, that we should delight each other uh, and we should delight our customers and that it's cool to make things for fun because you never know if you're playing around and you build something for fun, then you can then use that and create something else later. And at Dropbox, we also have four hack weeks a year, which is really cool. So an entire week dedicated to just building whatever you would like to build, and it happens four times a year. Like, that's pretty amazing, and definitely part of that idea of delight. Another value we have is to aim higher. And for me, this is awesome when you're working in infrastructure, because there's just so many things that you could do to really push your team and yourself to be better every day. And when you're working with people who are amazingly smart and you know that you can learn so much every day, it's really exciting. I love that feeling. Recently, we created our roadmap for the next 12 months. And I know that this sounds like a kind of hard thing to do when you're working in infrastructure and things change so fast, and also you're scaling very fast. But it's been really helpful for us. A lot of the things that we started to brainstorm were like, what are the things we would love to build like if we had the time? Uh, and we all just got into a room for a few hours and put those onto our roadmap. And now we're starting to build all of these things that we brainstormed, and it's been really fun. And a lot of them are like, one person will own this project and they'll work on it for the next two or three months. But by the end of the year, I'm so excited to see what we'll have created. It'll be really amazing. And I think the most important thing for us has been that it's good to have this roadmap, but we also have to always stay flexible, especially somewhere like Dropbox, where we have several different infrastructure teams and we all need to be helping each other all the time. We often will have another team that says, we need you to help us with this, and we'll add it to our roadmap. And a thing that I think has been really important for us is that we actually like print out our roadmap and we have it next to our team. So when anyone walks around, they can see what we're working on, the different kinds of tools that we're building and what we're excited about. And it's been fun too, because we've actually had um, different team members say, hey, like that project sounds really cool. Can I work on it with your team? And we're like, yeah, that's awesome. So now we've started to have cross-team projects, which is really great, working on exciting things. I'm very excited for the next few months. And for me, like, I think the, one of the reasons I love cloud infrastructure and just infrastructure in general and working on systems is that you feel like you're building the rocket ship while it's flying through the sky. That's what I always feel like. I'm sure everyone feels like that. You just know that like, if you're scaling, you can't slow down. And you need to make sure that you're still going in the right direction. Something that's really helped, which I realize, is the follow the sun model. When I've worked at other places, I had to hire teams that worked night shift and did graveyard shift, and that can be really tough. But I love now that we actually do have follow the sun, where in San Francisco we have us working in the daytime, and then in Malta it switches over and it's their daytime, and same for Dublin. That's been really awesome. And I love that too, because if you think Australia right here, like, we can be working in the daytime, which is the nighttime in the US. Especially when I was in working at DigitalOcean and it's ba they're based in New York, I came to Australia and I was working with my night shift team. And that was great. So I think it's an exciting opportunity for Australians to be able to work on that shift. One of the concepts we have at Dropbox is also KTLO, which is keep the lights on. And I love just thinking all the time about reliability and availability. How do we make our systems reliable? How do we make sure that they're available? And how do we measure to show that that's happening all the time? And definitely a big thing that we do is constantly collect metrics and generate automated reports and send those out every day. I haven't seen that anywhere else before, but it's awesome. I love it. We also keep a captain's log and do a postmortem for every page. This is similar to a lot of other companies that do this that I've seen, like Etsy. But it's really helpful, and it helped us reduce pages a lot. And I know it sounds like, ooh, like to have to write the root cause of the page, what the next actions were. Like It can be a lot of work. But in the end, you actually solve the root cause of the problem, and you might not see it ever come back again. And that's definitely happened for us several times. We also do frequent disaster recovery testing. 
And I think this is great. It's like, you know that the GRT is coming. You can see the shark in the water. And that's helpful because you can prepare for it and hopefully you'll pass. I've run lots of DRTs in the future. A few years ago, like, I didn't pass some of them. I remember it being really tough. But now I've gotten much better at it. And it's all about planning and preparation and working across your team. And I love that. Another thing I think is really cool, which we're working on this year, is fault injection. And the idea of, like, Netflix Chaos Monkey. I love those types of tools. You don't know what's going to break, but it helps you figure out the unknown unknowns that are really tough to identify. And that's a great thing, because there are many, many open source tools that you can use to build upon and build out for your infrastructure. And one of our last values that I really wanted to talk about as well is we, not I. I think this is super important when, you know, we are in an environment where we're looking after systems and systems break and it's tough and we work on call and there's a lot of things happening all the time, but it's very important to take time out to celebrate and every week to be like, okay, let's reflect back. Last week, it looked like this. And this week, we're actually doing way better. Like, we've fixed things, and it's awesome. And then if you reflect back three months ago, you're like, wow. So just to close, the different types of things I wanted to talk about were to aim higher, sweat the details, reduce pages, invent tools, automate, script, auto-remediate, trigger faults, monitor, alert, and snooze, and always create time to build plan, roadmap, track, and celebrate. And the most important thing, to always be coding and building your own tools. Yeah. Thank you. OK, we've got about time for about one question, just while the next speaker sets up, or a couple. Just, uh, just repeat it back. For the pages that do make it out of this system, yep. how do you handle the priority and like, panic level? Yes. Um, so a big thing that we do with that is we actually page on everything. So we don't do different levels of paging. So we only page if you should actually get a page, if the person should be alerted on it. And I think that's really important, because people often say that, should you have different levels of paging? We, we only page if you should get a page. and. If it's something that you want to get a warning, we might just send an email rather than page. Thanks. Uh, that's probably all the ones we have time for. We'll just get the next speaker set up. Thank you. Yeah.